Welcome to my channel. My name is Ria and today we are going to talk about the full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Pisces. Full moons are end points and eclipses are karmic. So we can say that this is a karmic ending. It's a karmic completing out. It's a karmic closure. It's a karmic release point. Eclipses bring fated events, destined events, and we have another eclipse in about 14 days. So this period between eclipses from this moon to the next is a karmic time. It's a fated time. Events that are meant to happen, happen during this time. This eclipse is in the sign of Pisces, which is the last sign of the zodiac, which signifies endings, which signifies things closing out. So in a very big way, the theme of this eclipse is endings, letting go, closing things out. This is a North Node Eclipse. It is with Rahu. Rahu signifies where we are headed and Rahu right now is in the sign of Aries, the first sign. And what this tells me is that we need to close things out. We need to let go of things. We need to surrender to the universe so that we can have a new beginning, so that we can take action for a new beginning, so that we can move into the future. And this theme of endings and beginnings has been very prominent for the past few months. If, you, if you've been watching me regularly, then you know that we've been in the midst of closing out past chapters and simultaneously beginning new ones. But the emphasis of this particular eclipse is more on closing things out so that we can fully step into the beginning, but we are not fully there in the beginning yet, right? We're not fully there yet. We still have time to go, but we are working towards that. We are in the transition period. And this transition can feel something like endings are happening, beginnings are happening, but endings are fully not complete, nor are the beginnings, right? Whatever we've begun, it's not fully, it's real, but it's not. It's not where we want it to be. Let's just put it that way. And the ending, we think we've let go of a life. We think we've let go of something, but it still lingers, right? So this eclipse is an opportunity to let go of that. However, we will continue this closing out of the past, this letting go for, for, uh, for some time, right? For a few months, at least, at least. So that's the big theme. Now, let me just talk about the eclipse and then we'll talk about the bigger picture where I'm going to talk more about the beginning and ending that energy that we're in. So this eclipse is in the sign of Pisces that I've already told you guys. What I haven't told you yet is that Saturn is there. Saturn is a very tangible energy, right? And what I mean by that is wherever Saturn is transiting in our chart, we feel that. It pulls our focus to that area of our life. For example, if Saturn is in a house of health, we might find ourselves focusing more on our diet, on our lifestyle, on our habits, so that we can get healthier, that sort of thing. And Saturn right now, since March 2023, is in the sign of Pisces, right? And what that tells me is that a lot of attention is on the sign of Pisces. Again, closing things out, endings. And like I said, it's been here since March 2023 and Saturn spends about two and a half to three years in a sign. So do the math. It still has some time to go in this sign. So that process of truly ending the past will not be complete with this eclipse. But we are in it. We have been in it since March 2023. We will continue to be in that process of closing out the past. And this eclipse is a milestone. The next thing I want to mention is that the moon is at 25 degrees and we have Neptune sitting at 28 degrees. Neptune's really, really close to this eclipse. And Neptune, while it is one of the most spiritual, creative energies, right? It's not an easy energy. It's confusing. It brings uncertainty. It can bring um, this feeling where one feels, oh, I'm not able to figure it out. I'm not able to see things clearly, right? That's the sort of feeling Neptune brings. It can bring delusions as well. It can bring um, detachment from reality. It can bring escapism. It can bring this feeling to escape one's reality, right? Be it via any means, it can bring this feeling of, okay, this reality is too harsh. I need to escape it. So in a nutshell, we can feel slightly confused. We can even feel slightly low on this eclipse. We can feel like things are uncertain, things are unclear. 
there can be this feeling of reality is too harsh but it's temporary right we will the moon will move on we will also have another eclipse so that's the positive thing that this energy will pass and the best way to manifest uh, manifest the best way to manage this energy is to um, channel it in a positive way when where Neptune is concerned the positive manifestation of Neptune is creativity it's music it's going with the flow it's relaxing right it's not falling into this need to escape it's not falling into this need to um, escape via anything it's about channeling it into doing something creative so that's how one can manage Neptune. Nonetheless, it can be slightly confusing. So just keep that in mind. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is that Mercury is building up its opposition to Saturn. Mercury is our logical mind. It's our thinking. It's our thought processes. It's all the little things in our life. And with an opposition to Saturn, what this tells me is that we might be in a very serious sort of frame of mind because Mercury is our mind and Saturn is a very serious planet. So there might be something serious that we are focusing our attention on. It could be something as simple as being, you know, academic because Saturn Mercury can also be a very academic kind of con um, combination. But generally speaking, this can bring a decision. This can bring also a commitment. And this is kind of contradictory, but with Neptune there, there can be confusion. But with the Mercury opposition to Saturn, there can be this uh, commitment to something. There can be this uh, decision as well, right? So just keep that in mind. And again, Saturn Mercury may not feel the best because it's very serious. We are serious in our minds. So just keep that in mind. The next thing I want to mention is that Mars is in a square. With the nodes it has actually moved past its exact square with the nodes nonetheless it's still in that configuration and any planet that's in a square with the nodes is highlighted so for the past few days mars has been highlighted the build-up to this eclipse has been with mars in a square to the nodes and what this means is mars is at the forefront mars is about taking action it's about um taking the first step towards something so maybe we've done that and that's the positive manifestation of Mars, but the negative manifestation of Mars is aggression, right? It's a very impulsive planet. It's a very aggressive planet. So in the negative form, it can manifest as these things, but in the positive form, it can manifest as taking action, getting things done, taking initiative. So the build up to this eclipse has been Mars square the notes. And the next thing I want to mention is that we also have the Saturn Pluto semi square, right? Saturn Pluto are in a 45 degree angle, close to a 45 degree angle. And what this brings up is 2020. If you recall, Saturn and Pluto met up Jan 2020. Right. And since then, we've been in this massive change. Since then, we've had these big transits, which have brought a lot of change in our lives. And this semi-square is going to somehow bring up 2020 themes. So just keep that in mind as well. The next thing I want to mention is what I mentioned in my last video, that we are preparing for something new. Right, we have been in this big transition since 2020. Saturn Pluto conjunction happened in Jan 2020. Saturn Jupiter conjunction happened in December 2020. And since then, it's been change, it's been beginnings, it's been endings. But right now, also, we are not fully there where we can say that ending has fully happened. Right, if that makes sense. A lot of new has come in, yes. A lot of old has gone, yes. But we are not fully there we, where we can say that, okay, the past is kind of done with fully. So speaking of that, we will have the outer planets. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto change signs shortly. And when I say shortly, it's months. It's not weeks, it's months, right? So keep that in mind, but they're slow. So it's a slow build up. It's a slow change. And Uranus has been in Taurus. It will enter Gemini. We have Neptune at the end degrees of Pisces. It will enter Aries. Pluto 
Change signs March 2023 after 15 years from 2008 to 2023 March it was in Capricorn then it entered Aquarius and then it went back into Capricorn then it entered Aquarius again and now it's back into Capricorn since September of this year and will be in Capricorn till November of this year and what that means is that whatever loose ends there were in closing out the theme from 2008 to 2015 we are doing that in these two months and then November it will enter Aquarius for good and it will stay there for almost two decades. So a big ending is happening in these two months. This eclipse is a milestone and then in the near future with Uranus and Neptune changing signs more things will end, the past will close out and the new will reveal itself, it's already revealing itself and we will also have Saturn finish up in the sign of Pisces and enter Aries, finish up in the sign of endings and enter the sign of beginnings, although Saturn does not like to be in the sign of Aries. But we'll talk about that when we get there. So a lot of the old closing out, a lot of the new coming in and I just wanted to mention that, I just wanted to emphasize that because it's slow, right? And when things are slow, it can be frustrating and when things are frustrating one tends to give up so it's very important to not do that it's very important to realize that we are working towards something new and it's taking time right and that's okay and the last thing i want to talk about is the fact that we have a lot of retrograde energy right now. We have Saturn retrograde, Neptune re uh, retrograde, Pluto retrograde, Uranus retrograde. So there's a lot of retrograde energy right now. And compared to the beginning of this year where all planets were direct and things were moving past, this time period can feel a little slow because we are in retrograde energy. So a good time to review and we might be actually doing that. We might be fine tuning things that we started at the beginning of this year, things that we started at the beginning of this year, maybe coming back up again. You know, maybe we've missed out on something. So that sort of energy is there where we are revisiting things that we've already worked on before. So... That's this eclipse in a nutshell and to sum it up I would say a lot of emphasis on release, a lot of emphasis on the past closing out and these two months are about closing out that 15-16 year cycle with Pluto and Capricorn so a lot of emphasis on that and in the near future with so many planets changing signs right especially the outer planets, the slow moving planets we are preparing for something new and we are getting rid of something old. So I hope this video was helpful and useful and I have covered the highlights, right? There's a lot more detail one can get into, but these are the highlights and these are the broad themes that I wanted to touch upon. And these two weeks are karmic. These two weeks are fated and destined. And as a general thing on eclipses, it's best to um, control one's impulses, right? Because the tendency is to react. That's not what we should do. We should be proactive about it. If there's something going on, um, assess, analyze, and then take action. It's not about reacting, right? That's one of the things that we can work on, that we can control on the eclipse is our reaction, is our uh, impulse. So that's that. And another thing that I did not mention is that this eclipse is making an angle with Uranus as well, which is the unpredictable one, which is the unexpected one. So that element can be there as well with this eclipse. So I hope it was useful and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye.